Good morning. This is English 8 and this is for April the 1st on Wednesday. I hope you're having a good day today. Uh, we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday. We were talking about the fact that clauses, adjectives and adverbs, uh, they describe. Adjective clauses will describe a noun or a pronoun. An adverb clause or is going to tell us where, when, how, how often, to what extent, or why. But we have some clauses that are gonna act as a noun clause. That means that they're gonna act as our subject, or our direct object, or our indirect object, or the uh, positive, or the object of a preposition. So we have to look and see how every clause is used. Okay, let's look at uh, where we left off. Let me look over here quickly. You did numbers four and five. Two questions, all I asked you to do for homework last night. Just wanted you to give it a little thought. Look at number four. The treacherous winter did more damage than the severe summer did. Than the severe summer did is our clause. What does it describe? It describes did damage. It describes our verb. It's an adverb clause. Friends and good manners will carry you where money won't go. Where money won't go t tells us what? Where will it carry you where money won't go? By the way, there's a lot of truth in that. If you have good friends, the right kind of friends, that, those are things that can't be bought with money. Friendships that are based on, as, that are spiritual and that they're good for you and they're good for your walk with God, those are the kind of friends that you can't buy. They are, they are uh, when your money runs out, so to speak, they're still there. Unlike the, the prodigal son, you know, he had friends as long as he had money, but as soon as he ran out of money, the world deserted him. Let's look at exercise B. Here we're gonna underline the dependent clause. Once we find it, we're going to identify it. Is it a noun? If it's a noun clause and it's acting as our subject, our direct object, our indirect object, our object of the preposition, or it's acting as an appositive. Or it could be an adjective clause. If it's an adjective clause, then it's going to be describing a noun or a pronoun. Or it could be an adverb clause. If it's an adverb clause, it's going to be describing the verb, an adjective, or another adverb. Look at number one. Although she was an African slave, Phyllis Whitley became one of the first popular women poets in the colonies. What's the clause? Although she was an African slave, because the word although is a subordinate conjunction, okay? What does that describe? It describes became, so that is an adverb clause. Number two, her poetry, which often centered on spiritual and classical themes, was published in a book in 1773. What's the clause? Which often centered on spiritual and classical themes. The word which is a relative. And what does it describe? It describes Poetry, what kind of poetry is it? It's poetry that was centered on spiritual and classical themes. Since it's describing poetry, it's describing a noun, it is an adjective clause. Number three, Anne Bradstreet knew that she wanted to write about her home and family. Okay, what's my clause? That she wanted to write about her home and family. Okay, what does that she wanted to write about? Her home and family tell us. I hope you said that it's a noun clause. Let's figure out why it's a noun clause for those that you, of you that weren't certain. The verb is new and Bradstreet is my subject. And Bradstreet knew what? She knew that she wanted to write about her home and her family. So that whole clause is acting as my direct object. Look at number four. Because she lacked formal education, Abigail Adams read extensively. What's my clause? Because she lacked formal education. What does that describe? It tells us why she read. Okay, so since it tells us why and it describes a verb, it is a adverb clause. Number five, Mercy Otis Warren, who lived during the War of Independence, wrote about political and social issues of her day. What's the clause? Who lived during the War of Independence? Who does that describe? 
it describes Mercy Otis Warren. Since it describes a person, and a person is a person, place, thing is a noun, and it describes a noun, it is an adjective clause. Well done. Now, when you are writing, and uh, as you've seen, we, I'm starting to give you some writing assignments, that is for your creative writing homework. And those are gonna be your creative writing grades, okay? So make sure that you're giving those thought and you're not just winging any old thing down or worse yet, leaving it blank. An adverb phrase or a clause, I'm looking at the page of 207, that modifies a verb may be placed before or after the verb, but not between two verbs. If you put it between two verbs, I don't know which verb it's modifying. So you either have to put it right in front of the verb or right after it, but you cannot put it, if there's two verbs, it can't just go in the middle, it's gotta be clear. Number two, an adverb phrase or clause, either one, that modifies an adjective or an adverb goes after the word it modifies. If it's an adverb clause or an adverb phrase, it goes after the word it modifies. Now, place adverb modifiers as close to the word that it modifies as possible. Let's look at the board. I wrote a couple of these on the board. They're the same ones that are in your book. Okay, so look at page 207. It says, Trisha told me on Monday that the deadline to sign up for camp was due. There's something that's in the wrong place. There's a, there's a phrase or a clause in the wrong place. Do you see it? Uh, hopefully you chose on Monday. My question here where it is, I don't know if Trish told me on Monday or if it was due on Monday. So I have to put that close to what I wanted to say. Let's say that I want it to be, I want it to be so that she told me on Monday. On Monday, Trish told me that the deadline to sign up for camp was due. I could just have easily moved it to down by camp so that I would know that it was when it was due was on Monday. I could have said Trish told me that the deadline to sign up for camp was due on Monday. Now, if I move it down here, the deadline is Monday. If I move it over here, she told me on Monday, but it can't be in the middle because now I'm confused and I don't know what the answer is, okay? Number two, at the bottom of her suitcase, Molly found the belt she wanted. Well, at the bottom of the suitcase describes what? It should say Molly found the belt she wanted where? At the bottom of her suitcase. So this clause at the bottom of her suitcase actually needs to go down here to want it, okay? Number three, Lily read the article on, the, on botany in the library. Well, in the library, what does that describe? Does it describe Lily or does it describe the article? In the library, Lily read an article on botany. Or I could say, Lily read in the library the article on botany. But this needs to go back and tell me about where Lily was. Tonight for homework, I want you to look at page 206. You're gonna write three original sentences that contain a dependent clause. One noun clause, one adjective clause, and one adverb clause. I also want you to go to exercise B. Write one original sentence containing an adverb phrase and one original sentence containing an adverb clause. Make sure you place the modifiers correctly. Now, I'm just gonna tell you that your, your homework, I'm gonna write it down here, homework is exercise C and B. These are going to be for a quiz. So please take your time, think about them, make sure they're right, double check them, find out what, and make sure if they're a clause, they have a subject and a verb. Okay, make sure that you know what it's modifying and do you have it positioned right? Do you have it close to the word it modifies? Do them in your book. You have a different homework assignment online, but I'm going to tell you, I'm gonna ask you for these sentences to be typed in so that I can grade them. So please make sure that you do your very best work. 
All right, guys, have a great day. I miss you so much. This room is boring without you, all right? Hope to see you very soon. I'm praying that the president and the governors don't extend this any longer. I know some schools have canceled for the year. That would be terrible. I do not want them to do that. I want you guys to come back. I want you to come back on May 1st. Got it? All right. Miss you.